Let's look at finding the p-value in one sample z-tests. I am going to assume that you already know how to find areas under the standard normal curve using either a computer or the standard normal table. If you don't know how to do that, you should figure that out before watching this video. In hypothesis testing, the p-value is the probability of getting the observed value of the test statistic or a value with even greater evidence against the null hypothesis if the null hypothesis is actually true. Now even if you don't fully understand the definition of a p-value, it's important that you know the idea that the smaller the p-value, the greater the evidence against the null hypothesis. Let's look at finding the p-value in a few different situations. Suppose we want to test the null hypothesis that the population mean is equal to some value of interest to us against the alternative hypothesis that it is actually greater than that value. If we're sampling from a normally distributed population and sigma is known, this is the appropriate test statistic. We have a z-test statistic. And we call it a z-test statistic because this test statistic has a standard normal distribution if the null hypothesis is in fact true. Suppose we carry out the sampling and we get a value of our test statistic of 1.43. Well, to find my p-value, I'm going to draw out my standard normal curve because this is the distribution of the test statistic if the null hypothesis is true. And zero's here in the middle. Now, we got a test statistic of 1.43. 1.43 is over here somewhere. Now, how do I get my p-value for this? Well, my alternative hypothesis is that mu is greater than mu naught. And if x bar is a lot greater than mu naught, then that gives some evidence against the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. So the larger the value of this test statistic, the greater the evidence against the null hypothesis. And so my p-value is going to be the probability of getting the value that we got this 1.43, or something even larger than that, and that is simply the area out to the right of that test statistic. And if we go to a computer or the standard normal table, we can see that that area is 0 0.0764. So that is my p-value in this scenario. Contrast that with this situation, where we are testing the null hypothesis that mu is equal to some value of interest to us, against the alternative that mu is actually less than that value. We carry out the test in much the same way, and we get a z statistic of 0.73. We're going to draw our standard normal curve here. I'm going to put in 0 for a little perspective, and I'm going to put 0 0.73 in here. This is our test statistic, and it has a standard normal distribution if the null hypothesis and the assumptions are true. If x bar is much less than the hypothesized value of mu, then that starts to give evidence against the null hypothesis. So if this z statistic is small, in other words, far out in the left tail of the distribution, then that gives evidence against the null. So the p-value is the probability of getting the value that we got here or something farther to the left, which is simply the area to the left under the standard normal curve. And if we use our table or a computer, we would see that this is 0 0.7673. Now suppose we're using a two-sided alternative. So we're testing the null hypothesis that mu is equal to some value of interest to us against a two-sided alternative. And we get a z statistic of minus 1.16. Well, we draw our standard normal curve, and I'm going to put zero in here again for a little perspective, and draw the value of our test statistic of minus 1.16. Well, our alternative hypothesis is two-sided, so values far out in the left tail give evidence against the null hypothesis, or values far out in the right tail give evidence against the null hypothesis. So, we are interested in this area here, the probability of getting what we got in our sample or something farther out in the tail. But, we also say, wait a minute, if we got 1.16, had we gotten a value over here, we would have thought that just as unusual and just as much evidence against the null hypothesis. So we're not really just looking at the left tail here. We also say, what if we got the same value in the right tail? We would have thought that just as unusual. So we want to incorporate this area here. But these two areas are the same. The standard normal distribution is symmetric about zero. 
So the p-value here is going to be double the area in the tail beyond our test statistic. Double to account for the tail that it's in and the other side. So our p-value in this case, since this area is equal to 0 0.1230, our p-value is double that area in the tail, and that's simply going to be 0 0.2460.